Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy. On Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy, founder of Inspired Living University, the sacred learning curriculum and community for women who yearn to dive deeper into their own wisdom and touch base with the wisdom and experts of other female visionaries. Go to inspiredlivinguniversity.com. You know, one of the roles I play in my life is a stepmom. And it's been a role I've cherished. I've actually done it twice, actually. And the first time I didn't get it quite right. You know, there's so many nuances that I wish that the, my guest today, I wish I knew her way back when. So we're going to be talking with Claudette Chenevere, and I love saying her name, also known as the stepmom coach who works with women as they struggle to create a cohesive family life. As a speaker, author, and step family professional, Claudette mentors and guides stepmoms through the process of establishing a harmonious and thriving home life for their families. Her book, The Stepmom's Book of Boundaries, is available on Amazon. And you can learn all about Claudette and her coaching practice, self-study program for stepmoms at stepmomcoach.com. Welcome, Claudette. Hi, Linda. I am so glad that you could join me. I've been following you for a while. You're in one of my uh, sacred communities, and I said, you know, man, I wish you were around 30 years ago when I first, <laughs> ent- you know, first entered the role of stepmom. I had a five and a half year old, and then a three and an eight year old came, um, w- you know, with my husband, and I loved them dearly. But there was a lot of navigating, so mm-hmm. I said to myself when I saw you know, everything that you're doing in the world, I said, wow, I can imagine how many stepmoms are in my audience who could really use your wisdom and expertise. So thank you again for joining me. Ah, oh, thank you. And, you know, Linda, when you say that you wish I was in your life 30 years ago, I say the same thing about myself, right? Um, 30 years ago, there wasn't this kind of help and support for stepmoms and so stepmoms today are so lucky to be able to have the support and at least the tools available to them that they didn't have like 30 years ago exactly and we forget about ourselves right and i got to say something um the issues that stepmoms face today are so different than what it was 30 years ago because now we have Mm. social media we have so many different layers um So let's talk about that. What are some of the common issues that stepmoms are facing today? Well, as you mentioned, right, there's social media, there's there's a lot of struggles that stepmoms today are facing in part because a lot of stepmoms who come together do so because of a divorce, because they're single parents. As before, let's say in the time of our parents, it was mostly around, um, you know, the parents, one of the parents were, uh, this was that, deceased uh, for various uh, reasons. And so today, stepmoms struggle a lot because of uh, challenges with having um, a next spouse that may not be completely happy with the idea of having another woman taking um, the place or taking on a role of a of a parent. We never truly take on a take over or or replace a a, a parent, but to be in the role of a parent, and so a lot of moms and stepmoms are struggling with that area. 
Um, other issues is that there's a lot of um, conflict a lot of controversy around how to raise these kids because we all have our own ideas and our own perspectives around how we should be raising kids. And even within um, biological parenting, you know, and, or couples, people struggle with the way to raise kids. And so that is always a challenge as well. And I noticed, you know, I'm looking, thinking back on my journey, and I'm, I'm watching my daughter now, um, who's a single mom of a beautiful seven-year-old, and she made the conscious decision to, to leave uh, the relationship, mm -hmm. and she's been on her own for about three years, and she just met someone. And I'm, you know, I'm on this path, and this, ge this gentleman is amazing. The family loves him. And I remember saying to him just two months ago, I said, you know, how does it feel to have a child in your life? Because he hasn't had children to date of his own biological. Mm -hmm. He said, Lynn, he goes, it feels amazing. He goes, she already has an amazing father. Mm -hmm. So that takes the pressure off me. And I said, what do you mean? He says, I can be her friend and show her how a woman should be treated. And so that, as you know, makes my heart feel good as a mom. Yes. But it's not always that easy, is it? No, it isn't. First mm -hmm. of all, what a smart guy. <laughs> what yeah, a smart indeed. guy yeah. to, to acknowledge that, um, he, the, that um, your grand, it's a granddaughter, right? She said, yes. Yes, that she already has a dad and that so he's not there to replace her. And somehow when we think about stepmoms and, and where I see a lot of the struggles or where they want to be replacing or to take over a, a role that a, a parent is already there. And that is where it's challenging. Um, no one wants to be told you're, be, you're a bad parent. No one wants to be told you're not doing things right. And so whenever we hear that, we become defensive. We become, we're trying to prove the other person wrong. And so when you come from a collaborative um, um, thinking or a collaborative uh, aspect of being in the child's life, and to be a role model. I love the idea of role modeling because I think kids today need this more than anything else. And so, you know, this is a great example of your daughter's um, boyfriend wanting to be a, a positive role model of teaching his um, his stepdaughter to be, if you wish, how yeah. to ch how a uh, uh, women should be treated, how relationships come together and be strong and healthy. It doesn't mean they're not going to have challenges. That would be naive to think there's no challenges to be faced. But to come from the perspective of, you know what, I want to be a good teacher. I want to be a good role model. I want this child to see what being happy and working through our challenges looks like. I mean, that is a great gift to give to children today. Oh, it is. And think about it. Uh, this is how um, I look at it now 30 years later is the children are looking to us as the adults, looking to the moms, right, mm -hmm. and the dads, of course. They're looking to us to say, hmm, I wonder how they're going to navigate this change in our lives. You know, because there's been either separation or divorce, like you said. And if we don't show up in our highest vibration as a role model, then we're teaching them how to be the parents of tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I look at it as we have to get this right. We have to navigate this whole step parenting role in a healthy way. So I know you have a book called The Stepmom's Book of Boundaries. So why is this such an important topic? Is In your work, is that what you found over and over again, was there were boundary issues? Definitely. And, you know, I, although I talk about stepmoms in this book, I, I address all people and all family members. So it's not just 
the stepmom's job to set healthy boundaries. It's a family thing, right? And so oftentimes I think we forget that having boundaries is an important thing. And by boundaries I mean, you know, sitting, explaining to everybody what is okay and what it's not okay. I'm not talking about putting up walls or, you know, shutting the door and not letting anybody into your life. Or I'm not saying either to have an open door policy where you can be walked all over you. But that is not healthy for no one. And so what I talk about in my book is about, you know, having a conversation about what you as an individual feel is okay for you to have in your home, in your life. What are some of the, is, the boundaries you want to see in place? And then you as a couple come together and have a conversation. Okay, I can't allow your ex-wife to come into my house as if it was her home again. You know, that, that would be a, 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 a firm boundary, let's say, for me. Um, for the kids, they might feel like, hey, this is, I want my mom in my house. I want my mom to feel she's welcome. So those are types of boundaries you need to have a conversation and explain why you, you don't want this, um, your ex, your husband's ex in the home. Um, and then as, as you go through, boundaries help you feel protected. Boundaries help you feel safe in your home, not just for yourself, but for the kids as well. Think of it as, you know, when we're, the kids are playing outside in the yard. If they have no fence, if they have no limit as to where they could play, right, they could play in the street. And for some people, that's totally okay to play in the street. But if you live in a busy city where there's a lot of traffic, you wouldn't want your kids to play in the street. So it's okay to tell them, listen, you can't go past this, this sidewalk or past this yard because I want to keep you safe. So think of your boundaries as a way of, you know, protecting your family, protecting yourself in a way that everybody feels safe and secure. It's a perfect explanation of, I think it it helps everyone feel safe and loved and Mm -hmm. emotionally supported. And we're going to jump to our break. And when we come back, I want to talk more about that. And one of the other issues that a friend brought up recently is about, how she feels invisible within her own home when the stepchildren come to visit. So I think that's got to be a big one for a lot of women. So I'd love to talk about that when we come back from our break. Okay. I'll be back in a moment. I'm with Claudette Chenevere. Don't you just love the magical sound of that? And you can learn more at stepmomcoach.com. We'll be back in a moment. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Inspiration for a woman's soul. Aspire Magazine. Inspiring and supporting women on the path of self discovery. Claim your free digital subscription today, which includes access to thousands of dollars of personal development bonus gifts from Team Inspiration Partners. Claim your Aspire Magazine subscription today at subscribe to aspire.com. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Om Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.omtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Om Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Do you have time to read that inspiring book? or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth radio is conscious living for your soul every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Hey, America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America Nationwide Network of Food Banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. 
Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy. And with me today is Claudette Chenevere of stepmomcoach.com. We were just talking about the importance of boundaries. So right before the break, Claudette, I mentioned that I was just having a conversation. She knows I've been a stepmom twice for a long time, and she's only been one about probably two and a half years, and she's still navigating. And she said, Linda, I'm trying to find my place in the family. I'm so happy that my husband um, has a close relationship with his children, but it's so close that sometimes I feel like the the odd man out. How do I navigate that? What would you say, Claudette? So this is a common uh, feeling that a lot of stepmoms are, 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 are going through. And, you know, it, it's hard to come into a relationship, a family that's already established, that they have their own story and their history and their way of creating and, you know, coming together. And so here you are, you're coming in and you're, fi- you're feeling like, wow, you know, how do I fit in here? Like, how do, you know, how do I merge myself and, and feel comfortable, right, in, in being a part of this family? So first of all, you know, it's normal to feel like this, especially in a, in a very close-knit relationship between father and his children, where especially if there's been like trauma or struggles between um, that first family and uh, the other parent, parent, the parent, dad, and his kids tend to create sometimes a stronger bond. And so here you are, you're coming in, you don't know the family history as, as, like, you haven't shared all the family experiences the same way as the dad and his kids have. And so part of what I tell uh, stepmoms who are feeling this way is, you know, one, give it time. Second is, you know, you need to have a relationship with your partner, meaning you need to have one-on-one time with your your partner, either a date night, a weekly date night, um, you know, do things together so you can stay connected to the entire uh, journey of, of merging as a step family. One of my favorite um, mentors and authors and, and professional is John Gottman. And he talks a lot about, you know, um, coming together and reconnecting at the end of the day. So my husband and I, what we do is when he comes in from work, we give like a 10, 15 minute break just for transition period. So we have time to breathe. And then we just go through our day and reconnect that way. So, you know, when you find time to connect with your partner, you feel like, oh, well, I'm not so alone. Now, when it comes to connecting with the kids, your stepkids, and that may be harder because especially if your stepkids are not with you all the time, if they come every other weekend or if, they're, if you have shared custody or if they come over just for the summer, it's harder to have that kind of connection with them. So one of the things I recommend my stepmoms is find something you have in common. So, for example, I had a stepmom, she had two teenage um, stepchildren, and they weren't really happy about her being in their lives because they wanted dad all to themselves, and so they felt she was intruding on the time with dad. And so they were going camping, and she felt like, how am I going to go camping with these two kids who really don't care about me that much? And so one of the strategies we came up with was, you know, talk about the music. Her stepkids were very much into music. They enjoyed listening to all kinds of different types of songs. And so I um, encouraged her to look into um, asking them questions about the the songs they enjoyed, the groups they, they enjoyed listening to in a way that it started to create a connection. 
And the same with anything. Like, find what is that your fed kids enjoy doing, whether it's sports, reading, um, playing games, video games, even though sometimes we're annoyed with them being sharing so much screen time. You know, become curious about what it is they're doing, and that will grow into connecting with them, and you will get to know them as an individual rather than the extension of a parent. Oh, I think that's a great tip. It's um, meeting them where they are and showing a, a shared common interest. Mm-hmm. One of the other things, too, is knowing your role, right, mm-hmm. as a stepmom. Now, when I, 30 years ago, I, as I mentioned, my daughter was five and a half. His were three and eight. Now, those are young, young children. So, of course, um, it, was, it was a mothering role because I had to be, yeah. right, it, now, I can imagine it would be so different at 10, 11, 12, or 13, 14, 15. The one thing that I did that was important to me, because, and I'd love your thoughts on this, he had a tumultuous relationship with her. So mm-hmm. he did not speak to her. Even to get the kids, he would make them, her drop them off somewhere else. Well, when I came into his life, I didn't believe in that. And I said, that won't happen. These children need to feel like they can talk about their mother in their home. They can't feel like you're judging or you're mad at her just because the relationship ended. That's a story in itself. But I called her and I said, I want to do this together in a way, whatever, let's work this out between us. Mm -hmm. And we ended up having a great relationship. Them two never healed their relationship, but we did, her and I would do every parenting conference together. But we had to navigate my role and I wanted to navigate in a way that respected her, right? Do you find that some wives and stepmoms are able to do that? And do you yeah. recommend it? All right. And so, first of all, kudos to you for stepping up and doing this. And, you know, you were lucky in that um, the, 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 the mom wanted to work with you which is great. Unfortunately, it's not always the case, right? Mm-hmm. And so it, it, when we talk about stud families, there are so many different ways that step families function that it's hard to put like a one-size-fits-all because it doesn't. There are no one-size-fits-all. Exactly. And so ideally... I always recommend that the dad deal with his ex-wife one-on-one in in a way that is based on making sure that the children are safe and secure and happy. I agree with you. The kids need a place to be able to talk about their mom, their dad, without feeling judged, criticized, or threatened. No, No matter which home they live in, these kids need a place and, and the um, the the right to talk about their parents. Uh, I mean, they didn't decide to get a divorce. They didn't choose the relationship or the situation they are. They're, they're living because the adults made the decisions for them. And so as adults, we should be on our big boy and big girl pants and, and, you know, and do what's right. But this isn't always the case. And I understand there are certain circumstances where it's not healthy as well. And so, uh, you know, as a stepmom, understanding what your role is is defined by how um, your partner, you know, decides to parent his children and to engage with his ex-wife in a way that is healthy. Your role is varies, right? You said the kids were really young, and so you had more of a mothering role, which makes sense, right? You're, you're not leaving little kids to deal with is, issues that are, too, um, that are not theirs to deal with. First of all, children shouldn't have to deal with adult issues. That's why parents are there. That is our responsibility. That is our job as parents. We're teaching these children to become 
functioning, responsible, caring adults so that one day when they are parents, they understand what that role is. That means we need to take on that role. Now, I'm not saying that you are replacing a mother unless that mother isn't there. And even at that time, you know, that mother is always present in the child's head, in its imagination. So whether the mother is, is deceased or has gone away and no longer a part of these children's life. These kids make up these ideas in their head. And so for you to say you are now replacing their mother is really hurtful for the kids and for your relationship with them. So your role is really defined by how the dynamics inside your family is, meaning is your husband or your partner willing to step up to the plate and be continue to be the parent that he's supposed to be and to take care of the kids and to have you be there. So that means you need to support one another as adults to be there for the kids. Now, when it comes to the mom, the, the biological mom of the kids, you know, if you can work together and, and create a, a common ground, you don't have to be best friends, but you can respect one another and engage in a way that shows the kids that you don't necessarily have to like one another, but you can respect one another and work together to create what is needed for the well-being of these kids. And I think respect is the key word in that conversation mm -hmm. because, yeah. like you said, it's all about what the children feel when you're all together, too, and respect is something that it's a beginning point, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, too, um, before we jump to the next break, I think what made it easier in in my case back then, and and maybe this plays into all the dynamics, so I'm curious to hear your thoughts, because she was the one that left him, I was not a threat. Mm, yeah. Do you see what I mean? Now, if, yeah. if the male left the woman, especially for another woman, yeah. I think that is a whole other set. But her, she was thrilled that I wanted to be part of the life. And we had some navigating to do. But do you see how that could change the dynamic? Do you notice that in those instances? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that was so, key. I, I really believe that was the big key because teachers even looked at us like they'd say, Mrs. D, and would both stand up, and they're like, oh, my God, two wives together. <laughs> you should have saw their faces. But, but I got to tell you, for all those years, at the end of every parent teachers or whatever it may be, they said, we wish every family was like this. She goes, we have some that will sit in the car until the other leaves. Yeah. And I go, isn't that sad? Yeah. The kids would smile because they'd see us, you know. So I wanted to just cl clarify that because I do know it makes a big energetic difference. Absolutely. And so, again, you know the relationship, that how that relationship ended and your relationship as a stepmom started had – will set the tone as to how it's going to continue down the road, right? It yeah. doesn't mean it's, it doesn't change. There's, you know, there, we're always changing. We're always navigating into something different. But absolutely, you know, who, however that relationship ended and your relationship as a stepmom started will definitely make an impact in how, your, how everything will go. Good. I'm glad we covered that. And when we come back from the break, I want to talk about self-care because I forgot about self-care back then, right? I mm -hmm. now had three little ones that I loved and a full, you know, a, a new marriage and house mm -hmm. and all that. And, you know, that was one of my biggest struggles. So when we come yeah. back from our break, we're going to be talking about self-care for stepmoms. I'll be back in a moment with Claudette Chenevere of StepmomCoach.com. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Are you ready to experience the unshakable love and unleashed passion you really want? Great news. Discover what thousands of people are doing to transform their relationships in ways they never thought possible. And your partner does not need to participate in the process to enjoy the results you want in your relationship. 
Relationship expert and Aspire Magazine columnist Stacy Martino and her husband Paul are the founders of RelationshipDevelopment.org and Relationship U. They have successfully empowered thousands of clients with tools and strategies that really work to transform their relationship, any relationship, and your partner does not even need to participate for their proven system to work for you. Transforming your relationship is possible, and it begins with you. Take the first step and visit RelationshipDevelopment.org today. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious Hi everyone, this is Shay Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, free psychic readings, and so much more. I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy, and today we're talking about self-care for stepmoms, the importance of boundaries, and so much more with Claudette Chenevere. So, Claudette, is is self-care something that comes up over and over again with your clients? Oh, yes. <laughs> Actually, the lack of self-care is what, is what I'm seeing more oh, than Oh, yeah, I can relate. Right? <laughs> And I've been a stepmom for 29 years, and let me tell you as well, I didn't do self-care because self-care, that's not for us. We're moms. We're busy working. We're everywhere. Self-care is for other people. And, you know, I saw that at at one point I was was burning out uh, emotionally and physically, and I had no more patience. I wasn't able to give the kind of care and nurturing that I really wanted to give because I was, I was on fumes, right? And a lot of times that moms think that they have to give it their all. That means, you know, focus everything on their stepkids or on their marriage, on, their, on everybody else except themselves. And, you know, one of the analogies I use with my clients all the time is the airplane analogy, right, where you put your oxygen mask on first and then you help others because, let's face it, if you're unconscious, you can't help anybody else. That's the reason for it. And 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 if you're on fumes, like you said, you're not going to be the best step parent or parent because you're not going to be fully present. You're going to be short. You're going to be tired. You're going to be exhausted. That's the energy they feel from you, especially if it's children that just come on the weekends. They're like, oh, my God, I'm here, and she's overwhelmed. She's short. Yeah, exactly. That's not a good foundation for a relationship. For for any relationship. Exactly. So, you know, one of the most important things, like, I share with my stepmoms is find yourself a way to have some self-care. And self-care doesn't mean to do a lot of big things. You know, for me, after a while, self-care was taking a nice bath for 20 to 30 minutes, locking the door, putting a do not disturb sign on the door because, let's face it, when you have young kids, Everything is an emergency. 
And so, you know, I needed to teach them, you know, take, you can't disturb me. Unless you're dying or you're bleeding to death, you can't disturb me. And, you know, one of the things I, I see my kids now do, 30, almost 30 years later, is that they're taking care of themselves in a way so much more and so much better than I did. They all have kids of their own, and I see them going and taking care of themselves, going for walks, calling their girlfriends, or, you know, taking time to do things that re-energizes them rather than waiting to be on fumes. And so, you know, for stepmoms, especially those that have kids, their stepkids only on the weekends or occasionally, you know, take the time, even during those short periods of time, take the time to go for a walk on your own. Go for a coffee with a girlfriend. You know, read a book. You know, take an extra long shower, whatever that is. But you need time to re- recharge those batteries, whatever, whatever way you need to. And you'll be such a better person, not only for your family, but for yourself as well. So true. And how old are your children now? You said you've been a stepmom for 29 so- years. Yeah, so our my stepdaughters are thirty six and thirty seven, and my son is thirty five. And that's my that's my daughter's age, thirty five. <laughs> and isn't it beautiful to see them with their yeah. children now? Because it's such a gift. I also have a nineteen year old stepson. I'm sorry, grandson from my stepson, and I was there to witness his birth as well as the birth of my granddaughter. Mm-hmm. And to see my daughter now that no self-care is so important. I'm like, jeepers, I didn't know that at that age. (laughs) And to watch her teaching McKenna, okay, we need to take moments of quiet time, and McKenna will sit there and do her little yoga pose. But she knows, you know, I I wish someone taught me that as a child, right? So that's how important I believe self-care is, because for some of us, we never saw it mirrored for us. So Mm -hmm. now your children and stepchildren saw it mirrored, and now it's being passed down. I think it's such yeah. a, a sacred gift. Definitely. I think, you know, we saw, well, at least for me, I saw my parents, you know, it was work, 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 and no downtime. And if you, were, if you had any downtime, you were seen as lazy. And, you know, which is the farthest thing from the truth. Um, and so I love seeing our, our kids and my, my stepdaughters, you know, taking the time to, to you know, just relax and, and do what they need to do. And it shows in their kids, right? I, I see my grandkids knowing they have parents that are there for them and are present for them and are, have all of their attention because they're not spread all over the place and being stretched in everywhere. And the kids are, are better for that as well, right? I mean, they'll take their blankets and they'll go and take a nap or they'll just go in, into their room and just read a book and just they're taking care of themselves because they feel like, hey, this is, this is me. And you know what? One other thing I think is kids naturally do this is I think as we grow up, we tend to tune out the idea of taking time for ourselves because we think we need to be taking care of others and being busy all the time in order to be productive. Yeah, and if we had a family dynamic, as you shared, that is if you're not busy, then you're lazy. I have friends who have that ingrained in their, you know, in their 40s and 50s trying to flip that switch of thinking. I'm like, no, it's about being and doing. If you don't take time to be, you're not really present in your life. You're just on autopilot. But in teaching our children that, I think as I became more conscious and aware, it became, self-care became more important to me. It's funny, it became really important with me when I still had young ones, you know, but as the young ones grew and left the house, like all women, I still struggle with it. I have to be really conscious that I take time for me. So I think the self-care aspect, like you said, is something we all struggle with in different ways. Yeah, it is. I think it's, it's feel, afraid of feeling selfish. I, 
there's this aspect, especially I think for women, that if we take care of ourselves, we're being selfish. And I like to see this as we're being selfless, right? When we take care of ourselves, we're able to give even more to others. It's, it's not being selfish when we take care of ourselves. We're able to give a lot more to others around us when we do take care of ourselves. Oh, so true. And I remember a couple of months ago I shared with a client who was struggling with it. And she had the, she almost used the same words that you just did, Claudette. And I said, I challenged her and I said, so you don't think it's selfish when your husband comes home, your children come for the weekend, and you're exhausted snapping at him? Mm-hmm. You don't you don't think that's selfish? Yeah. And she said, oh, I didn't think of it that way. I yeah. said, they would be more, feel more blessed and honored if you took time for yourself so that you came at, to them at your highest and best, rested, yeah. filled with love. And she's still pondering that. She's like, I never yeah. looked at it that way. So I think it's so beautiful how you said it. it's selfless. Yeah. And let me say just one other thing. It's that sometimes, you know, it, it's okay to let dad and his kids have some one-on-one time alone. So you can take that time that they're spending, that dad is spending time with his kids, that you can do something different. Like go in and take care of yourself. Stop worrying about what they're going to do. It's not going to be perfect you know, one of the things that I notice is, well, maybe I'm not sure, maybe not so much today, but way back in my time, is that women felt that they had the upper hand in how to raise kids because they were women and they knew all of this. And dads, we needed to just tell them, uh, you're not doing it right. This is how you're supposed to be doing it. And I would love for women to understand, stepmoms and, and any women, to please let the guys do it their way. Unless the kids are about to, you know, be dropped on their heads or something. You know, it doesn't matter if they're eating cereal at night and if their diapers are crooked or if the T-shirt is backwards. It doesn't matter. What matters is that dad has time with his kids. And during that time, you can do the self-care, right? You can go and do something for you. Go painting, go walking, go with coffee with a friend. You know, so look at it that way. You're actually giving dad a gift, dad and his kids a gift, by letting them spend some time alone while you're taking care of yourself. And that's so true. And do you find that some women will say, but the – father doesn't want to have time alone he wants her to do it because there's that dynamic too again yeah, i have a exactly. family member he's he's not that type of dad i'm not saying he's a bad dad it's just like in his mind the way he was raised women do all that stuff yeah and, and so, so I, she's like oh my god i'm taking over his role and i never yeah. wanted that role and now he pulls back she's in charge of the children all weekend she feels as if he never sees them do you see that Yes. Story? Yes, definitely I do see that story. And so what I encourage is, and I've seen it, I've had clients where the dad would ponder off his duties, if you wish, onto his, his, the stepmom, his wife, and say, oh, but you're doing this so much better than I can. Well, uh, let's, so how I approach this is have him, you know, See the benefits of, you know, him spending time with his kids, especially if they're little ones. Because, you know, if I, if you wait until they're teenagers to spend time with them, when they're teenagers, they're going to say, blah, you were too busy for me when I was a kid. I don't want to spend any time with you as a teenager or even as an adult, right? And so... For men, what I like to tell them is, what is the legacy you want to leave your kids? What is it that you want your kids to remember you by? Do you want to be remembered as a dad who was always too busy working that you couldn't spend any time one-on-one with me and having, like, just a, a, a short conversation? And, you know, for dads that are fearful, think, give them a time frame. Just tell them it's 30 minutes. 
it's an hour out of the entire weekend. I'm only asking you to spend one hour. And if that's too fearful for them, if they're afraid, tell them, well, 30 minutes. And as they adapt and get accustomed to that time, they'll extend that on their own. And you know, they may not know what to do. They may be afraid of, well, what am I going to say to them? Well, how, what am I supposed to do with them? And so you may give them suggestions. You may help them, you know, navigate them through this. And so have a conversation with them. Help them through the process. You know, I'm having, I'm working with a couple at this moment, and the dad hasn't seen his kids in six months. And so they're spending uh, several weeks at, with him and his, his wife. And so they were worried, what am I going to tell them? What am I going to do with them? I have no, you know, I, I, I don't know what to do with them. And so I made him do a list of all the things he remembers doing as a teenager and what he would like to do with them and said, Give this list to your kids and, you know, have them pick one or two and just do it for a very short period of time, maybe a few times a week and see how that goes. You know, don't jump into with your both feet in and, and wonder, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? Start slow. Start with small things and grow into expanding it to more um, activities and time together. It's so true. It's almost like he, um, some dads have to learn to integrate into being a yeah. parent because whatever their role may have been, some are their workaholics. Like you said, yeah. that's what their identity was. So now suddenly they're like, um, you want me to parent too? And, yeah. and it feels foreign to them. So I like to say we've got to give them space too. And then, yeah. of course, it's the opposite end of the spectrum of some that have no desire to parent. But mm-hmm. it's... It's, it's working through with the dynamics that you're given when you're a stepmom, right? Or, or that you're not yeah. that you're given, that you chose. Because when you enter, I believe, a marriage and you know someone has stepchildren, you made the choice to bring those children into your heart too because they yeah. don't deserve any less than that. So it's a choice that you make into, you know, being with the, your, your partner and accepting that he has kids. Now, yeah. there's a, there, again, there's so many different levels that it's hard to put everything in one package. And so sometimes some stepmoms have a real hard time, you know, connecting with their stepkids. And sometimes it's just a personality um, issue. Uh, you know, th- we need people that we try as much as we want to, I can to, to connect and, and be a part of them. But there's this personality, there's this conflict that doesn't seem to, to be resolved. And so for me, what I tell them is respect, you know, respect them as human beings, respect where they are. You don't have to be best friends. You don't have to be like the, you know, agree on everything, but respect that they are there. And so because if you're telling a stepmom that she needs to love these stepkids, that the stepkids need to love her, that is so much pressure on the people that are involved in this dynamic that it ends up um, people are, the, 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 the family is, is struggling just trying to live a reality or live up to expectations that may not be realistic for them. Might not be their reality because of the dynamics, and I understand exactly. that. I can see easily how that can happen. And like you said at the beginning of our call, there is no one way because we're talking about humans, right, with a wide range of emotions, experiences, etc. It's finding the way that's right for your family. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And so, and the, and the way of finding what's right for your family is sitting down and having a conversation and being open and honest and being vulnerable, daring to say what is in your heart and what you're feeling in your soul so that you can have other people there. And they may not agree with you. And that you have to be okay with people not always being on the same page as you. It's, it's, it, it's, it's okay. You don't all have to agree as long as you respect that you are all, uh, you know, all human beings and you're working together to create the best relationship you can. I think that is the best place to start. 
It's a beautiful place to start. Just start with your heart, right? Being in the right place and then just step into it. Definitely. Well, I'm so I'm, I'm so grateful you're out there doing the work that you're doing in the world. As I said, I've been following you for a while and said, we need to have this conversation because so there are so many um, marriages or families that are made up of stepmoms. Yes, yes, definitely. And, well, think, think of it this way. With half of the population getting divorced, um, there, there's 73% that are getting remarried and then there's different kinds of families today and so whether you're married or live together or in a relationship where everybody knows someone who's in a step family everybody knows and so let's just help one another understand the dynamics and and be more realistic about what that means to be a step family rather than putting us in this cookie cutter form of what a family should look like which there are no shoulds and you know let everybody live whatever they feel their family dynamics look like exactly well i want to invite everyone to go to stepmomcoach.com learn more about claudette's work in the world grab a copy of her book the stepmom's book of boundaries also available on amazon Claudette, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for being such a light in the world and for um, doing the work that you're doing. Thank you so much, Linda, for having me. I enjoyed this conversation, and I enjoyed the work you're doing as well. Thank you. Mm, You're welcome. I look forward to having you tune in every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Ohm Times Radio Network for the Inspired Conversations radio show. You can also catch inspired conversation across multiple podcast platforms including itunes until next time choose love choose joy choose happiness my friends blessings thanks for listening to inspired conversations with publisher linda joy join our sacred space every tuesday at 2 p.m eastern and meet leading female visionaries empowering authors heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired Conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.